Hi. Today in our Art at Home video, we are making maps of places that we have been or that we love. Um, and I was inspired to do this project by this book. Um, it's called Three Days on a River in a Red Canoe. So I thought I would share the book. And I will give you a heads up, it's a really long book. Um, so you may notice, if you are a reader, you may notice that I skip a few details. Um, so, Three Days on a, red, on a River in a Red Canoe by Vera B. Williams. I was the one who first noticed the red canoe for sale in a yard on the way home from school. My mom and my Aunt Rosie and my cousin Sam and I put our money together and bought it. The people who sold it to us threw in two paddles and two big life jackets. This is the map that, one of the pages that inspired me to make our own maps. Um, it has labels like, mosquitoes are bad here, watch out for falls, very nice section, good starting place. So these are labels they've added into the map themselves um, based on their past trips on this river. As soon as we got home with the canoe, Aunt Rosie and Mom took out the maps. The canoe trips they had taken before Sam or I was even born were marked in colors. They found a three-day trip that could be just right for us. Here's everything we need for the trip. Lots of gear and food. Here we are on our way early in the morning. And they're in their yellow car with their red canoe on top. And you can see it says, we drove and 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 we drove. And we, drove. we drove all day. Now we are at the place Aunt Rosie and Mom had chosen for our first camp. We start on the river in the morning. Sam and I unloaded the car. Mom and Aunt Rosie put up the tent. We hurried to get inside before it got too dark and the mosquitoes took too many bites out of us. We lay in our tent listening to the river. That sounds nice. And then this is another page that inspired me. It says, our first morning on the river. And as you go along, as you follow along the river, you see different labels that they made. Here, I'm making the first fire of the trip. You go around the bend. It says, this is where we come out of the mist. I try paddling. Sam tries paddling. We find, and then you go, let's see, oh, this way. We find crayfish. We eat our lunch on top of this cliff. It's an apartment house for swallows. And we get to the bottom fast. They're rolling down the hill. And a good swimming hole. And they keep going. The river keeps going and they keep canoeing. Here are Mom and Aunt Rosie paddling into a part of the river like a hot green tunnel. I fell asleep. I think Sam did too. It's good Mom and Rosie didn't. Right here is where they heard the roaring of the waterfall. But they had been here before and, been, and had been listening to it, listening for it. It was marked on their maps. Here I am looking over the edge. Aunt Rosie and Mom are lowering the canoe by ropes down over the waterfall. Sam and I climb up and down until we have carried all the gear to the bottom. We're going to camp here even though it's still early. This is called portaging, when you have to take your canoe out and go around a waterfall or something else. Um, so I'm going to skip that. This is a fun page. It shows how to tie a hitch knot, or a ha two half hitches. Um, and then it shows how to make fruit stew with dumplings. Um, if you want, I could take a picture of this and add it to the newsletter if you ever want to make dumplings and fruit stew or two half-hitch knots while you're on a camping trip. Um, and then here's a picture of them setting up their tent. Have you ever set up a tent before? It can be a little tricky. I, um, we're going to try setting up a tent for Adventure Day in our backyard. After supper, we build up our fire and sit beside it. Mom tells us stories about the animals that like the nighttime. We watched the stars and the sparks of our fire going up to join them. This is a fun thing, telling stories by a fire. 
Um, so Sam isn't much of a weather predictor. They had a big rainstorm, but they stayed mostly dry in their tent. And then they set off while it was still raining in the morning. The rainbow faded and fish started to jump all around us. We got the fishing lines baited and into the water. Sam caught the first fish. Then I caught one. Then Aunt Rosie caught two in a row. Afterward, we spread out our things to dry on a sandy beach. You can see they are, the illustrator labeled all the different fish. Spotted sunfish, bullhead catfish, redfin pickerel, yellow perch, scale carp, brook trout, black carpy, and common white sucker. What mom and Aunt Rosie like to do best is take the canoe through fast moving water. They can follow all the curves of the current that and in the afternoon we canoe without stopping. Sam and I paddle too. Have you ever taken a canoe in rough or fast water? It's kind of exciting. Okay, and then I'm gonna skip ahead. Because it's so long. Um, in the morning, so after the after a rough a windy night. We can't believe this is the same river. It's so still. Twigs and leaves and flowers float around us as we start our last day on the river. We watch a muskrat swimming. A heron dives for a fish. We feed crumbs to the ducks. Cows watch us having a river visit. So they've got a great blue heron, the kind of different stages of its flying, a whistling swan, a mallard duck, a Canadian goose, and here's the muskrat. And there are the cows watching them. We canoe through a town. We come to a low stone bridge. Sam gets ex excited. He stands up to wave. Mom yells, sit down. I reach over and pull him down. Aunt, Mom, Aunt Rosie and Mom brace hard on the other side. This keeps our canoe and everything in it from turning over. But Sam ends up in the water. He swims to the rope. Aunt Rosie throws out to him and we tow him to shore. Mom doesn't say much, but she looks upset. Aunt Rosie looks scared. Sam changes to dry clothes and we canoe on. So there they are canoeing past the town. And that's when Sam falls in. Just past the train bridge, Aunt Rosie asks Sam to stand up and see what's ahead. He gets up as though the canoe were a baby's cradle. He reports that the river is ending in a big lake. He says it looks like the edge of the world on the other side. Aunt Rosie says that's because we're coming to the town dam. Mom points, to the, points the canoe across the lake. There's no current and the wind is against us. I'm glad it's slow going. When we get to the other side, our trip will be over. Do you ever take a trip or go on a hike or some kind of adventure and just wish it wouldn't be over? I do. And here we are, taking our canoe out onto the bank. Aunt Rosie showed me on the map where the river goes from here. She says it travels on through rocky places with lots of rapids. Someday, after lots of practice, we can go there. But now we must catch a fish for my cat, Six Toes. <laughs> Aunt Rosie is going to talk with other campers and find a lift back to our car, Ladybug, so we can get home tonight. Mom says canoeing back up the river against the current would be very, very hard, even if we had the time. So he's, they're catching a fish to take home to the cat. Way past midnight, we turn into our own street. One by one, we stumble into the house. I go to sleep to the sound of six toes chewing on his fish. It seems I can still hear the sound of the river running over the rocks. There's six toes eating their fish. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed this book. Uh, and I hope maybe it inspires you for your map making today.